like to talk a little bit about Tantra as being connected also to the second chakra. So to understand Tantra it's also important to understand a little bit about spiritual traditions. There's roughly two groups of spiritual traditions if you're seeking enlightenment. There's the traditions which work from the heart and there's the traditions which work from the head. So it is either about connecting, about surrender, about feeling, and Tantra is from this group, or it is about knowing, understanding, uh, obeying the rules, knowing the symbols. Uh, so within Tantra it is not about knowing a lot about it, knowing all the different postures or hand gestures or um, pressure points. It is nice if you know them, but this is not the essence of Tantra. It is not a knowledge tradition. It is very much a, no a tradition of learning how to connect better, learning how to connect more deeply. Um, tantric tradition is in the West often confused with sexuality. Um, I think this is probably because the original uh, similar traditions in uh, Europe have been destroyed. Um, because also in Europe there used to be both uh, patterns, both ways of following the letters and the rules of uh, the higher worlds and working through connection. Um, but this working through the connection is much more in the nature magic, shamanic, druidic cycle, the circles, which got unfortunately wiped out or displaced by Christianity, which is much more a rule-based and knowledge-based system. So here in Western Europe we don't have a lot of tradition anymore. We have a little bit of um, restoration through the Wiccan, uh, uh, for instance, but the original line has been pretty much lost. And this also makes especially Western people very vulnerable to mistakes in this tradition because there is a right path and there is a not so right path or anyway a path which will lead to things which are rather different than are proposed by the Tantra. So how to perform Tantra? Well, the goal of Tantra is to um, make yourself more and more sensitive so that you can attune to higher and higher vibrations. And in the beginning of course you just use your coarse senses, you see with your eyes, you taste with your tongue, you feel with your hands, that all your sensations are physical. And using your sensitivity, your attention, you start to open up more towards the object you're focusing on and you start to sense more their thoughts, their feelings, how their energy is moving, how your energy is responding to how their energy is moving and slowly but surely the contact deepens and deepens and ultimately the goal is that you can find the divine within yourself but also within whatever is outside of you that you will live in a world where, in a way, you are aware of the divine in you and of the divine in everything. And that this will be the basis of your relation, of your interaction. That you will act as a divine being towards and treat everybody else as holy. But it's a path. You can't get there immediately. And there are several powers which help us with the Tantra. In the Western tradition it is uh, really the, uh, the Old Mother, Gaia, Mother Earth, Siritwen. Um, from that perspective we are in a way trying to reconnect to the Divine um, by having also physical contact with it. So you can have physical contact with a person of the same sex, of the opposite sex, but also with an animal, with a tree, with a rock, with whatever. Because everything which exists is a manifestation of the Divine Mother. 
So even a man is a manifestation of the Divine Mother. And ultimately by finding this source within myself and within others, you become aware of the whole interplay, how in a way the Divine Mother is playing with itself, how things are coming out of this collective energy, collective consciousness, this great pool of energy, and you're just bobbing to the surface before floating down again um, after you end your life. And this is the type of awareness which we're looking for in what you could say the Western Tantric or Western sexual magic tradition. If you look at the Eastern tradition, it is not so much about connecting just to the divine or the collective consciousness. It is much more about um, developing the energy body by stimulating it. And by stimulating it, you're also inviting the divine energies within, within your first chakra to rise upward. And these divine energies can stimulate the development of all your other chakras. But to call up the divine, you in a way need a similar energy, also the divine. So in a way together you're striving to find the most divine part of yourself or and of the other. And these divine parts of your, both your beings will stimulate the divine in the other person. And this way this divine energy will start slowly rising up and developing all your powers, all your talents, all your body and uh, it will help you to grow spiritually, to evolve in your life. So it is not about sense gratification, it is not about getting more satisfaction out of uh, sexual contact. Any contact is just a means to an end. But we humans are programmed to like things and to dislike things. It is nice to get attention. Uh, if I get a lot of attention, it is very nice for my ego. I will feel important, I will feel powerful, I will feel loved. And of course it is nice if um, I'm desired sexually or I can gratify my own sexual desires. The animal in me, the instincts in me, are very happy with that and they can continue very easily. So it is very easy to get trapped in the tantric tradition, to become an addict, a sex addict, an attention addict, an energy addict, even a development addict, a growth addict. You're just looking for higher or nicer experiences all the time. But ultimately these are addictions. And even though they can have positive effects, ultimately it's a dead end road which you're heading on. So you might think that you're going up, but you're like going like that. <laughs> so how to deal with that? Well, fortunately there are several powers which help us to deal with that, who are in a way protecting us and guiding us on the path of Tantra. As I said, within the Western tradition, you have the Divine Mother, uh, whether you call her Gaia or uh, Seritwen or Hecate, doesn't really matter. Ultimately, she is the embodiment of the whole, and you are a part of her. And just like you're taking care of your own body, feeding it, nourishing it, making sure it doesn't get hurt, taking care of it if it is wounded. In the same way the Divine Mother is taking care of you when you're on this path. In the uh, Vedic tradition there are several powers which work with Tantra in different ways. So we have Shiva. Shiva is uh, the deity um, of, in a way, liberation. So the Shivite uh, method is really to help you to get rid of the things which are blocking you. So ultimately it is about a process of transformation, about realizing your desire and transforming it. So you have a desire 
you satisfy it and by satisfying it that the purpose of the desire can be fulfilled and then the desire is no longer necessary and you move on to a higher desire so this is very much the Shivite way of in a way working through this layer of desires and layer by layer slowly but slowly you get into higher and higher desires so you move from very physical sensations and desires to more emotional to mental to spiritual um, and ultimately to within the spiritual also to a higher and higher desires where ultimately you can only maybe find satisfaction by going to holy places and spending time with uh, holy objects and these will give you all the satisfaction you need because all the lower layers of satisfaction have disappeared so this is the Shivite Tantra and we have the Kali Tantra Kali Tantra is very much about using the life force so Kali is also called the dancing goddess so it is very much about moving your energy moving your body stimulating all parts of your being and strengthening all parts of your being so the essence of the Kali uh, tradition is more that the ability to grow is within you within everybody but that ability to grow has to be unlocked so you're in a way um, stimulating yourself to be the best you can be to have a perfect calm to have very strong and focused activity and to have a very clear and pure unclouded awareness and all of them at the same time so you're just not the focusing on experiencing one aspect and going very deep into that aspect but you're trying to do everything at the same time and balance all these powers within yourself and thereby you widen your energy channels and by widening the energy channels you can grow into a more powerful being energetically so this is the Kali tradition of working with the Tantra so it's much more about stimulating yourself stimulating others awakening the latent powers that lie within each being then there's also the Buddhist Tantra so the Buddhist Tantra is also the original way of reaching enlightenment in the Buddhist tradition later the Bardo method was added to it the Bardo method is in a way uh, the method of dying consciously of finding all your attachments which pull you back after your death into lower incarnations and working through them so that when you let go of your body you're free to move on the tantric way is very much to be both powerful and free uh, so it is you could say almost a combination of the Shivite method and the Kali method so before embarking on the tantric path the Buddhist needs to um, liberate themselves from all their attachments and only when they're free of their attachments they can safely go deeply into all the sensations without getting trapped without getting addicted without getting confused of what is happening to them or what to do or how to react to them and then they can use all experiences everything to empower their spirit to drive it up into a higher and higher vibration until it will reach a state of enlightenment so you're in a way stimulating the life force to power your transformation and you need to have a focus on letting go of everything but at the same time being able to stimulate yourself so it is not easy to follow the buddhist tantric path but it can be very liberating and lead to enlightenment which is not a small prize so I'll tell a little bit also where these things can go wrong because one of the problems which can happen is that the ego gets too involved 
And because the spirit has desires, but also the ego has desires. And here it gets a little bit tricky because you want many things. You want love, you want attention, um, you want food, you want sleep, you want to be caressed, you want to have nice clothes, um, you want to have a position in society, you want to have a steady income. But what is actually coming from your spirit, what is coming from your ego, what are just more animal instincts which we are rationalizing, and what's the effect of fulfilling them? Because ultimately what you feed is what will grow. So if I feed my instincts, ultimately I will learn to use my instincts, that my instincts will um, have positive results. And the same with my ego. If my ego has a desire, I fulfill the desires of my ego, then the ego becomes my tool for achieving things. And the same with my spirit. If I give my spirit things, the ego will get stronger and it will become my primary and go-to part to solve all my problems. So it is possible to deal with all the challenges we get on an instinctive level, on the ego level, on a spiritual level. And by working with the Tantra, we find a method of really feeding and strengthening different parts of our being. But if we strengthen the instinct and the ego too much, then ultimately there is not that much room left for the spirit anymore. On the other side, if we try to strengthen our spirit but we forget about everything else, our life tends to fall apart and our health tends to fall apart. So we need to stimulate also these lower parts of ourselves when we are performing Tantra. But we should realize what we are doing. We should realize what is the desire of our spirit and what are in a way the tools, the different levels which need to be achieved in developing the instincts, in developing the ego for the spirit to be successful. And what are parts of the instinct and the spirit and the, sorry, the ego which are blocking us, which are blocking the spirit from progressing. And this is where it often goes wrong, because in the West, in Europe, uh, most Europeans are by nature polygamous. We have changed our culture, we've been Christianized, and we've been told that we should be monogamous. But, as is evident from the amount of relationships we have and the amount of extramarital relationships people have or the amount of different marriages people have. People are not very good at being monogamous and usually the best we can try is to be serial monogamists rather than true monogamists like animals would do. So we find ourselves here in the West with a very strong pattern of uh, trying to get more partners because this is also what our energy body is attuned to, is made to how, how to grow by taking this from here, that from there, and then adding all these different parts of the puzzle together, and then I will grow. So there's nothing wrong with being polyamorous, but it can turn into a real problem if you do not realize it, and it gets a little bit twisted. So if you say, and admit to yourself, I'm a polyamorous person or a harem type person and I need all these different experiences to develop myself spiritually. Your focus is still on your personal development and you're just using uh, these different experiences, these different people. And you can use the Tantra to get the most out of a person in the shortest amount of time possible. So you can improve your effectiveness. So you don't need to spend a lot of time with that person and also you don't need to get that intimate with the person because instead of having to have uh, sexual intercourse with them maybe by just holding their hand you can really make that connection or looking into their eyes you can make a deep enough connection to get the stimulation you need the knowledge you need for you to grow more, uh, further so this is also tantric development 
that you are able to satisfy yourself and to learn from other people with less and less contact or with the contact being less and less coarse or, no, or less and less on a low vibration level. Problem is that we don't always use it that way. Many people use the Tantra to sex get satisfaction for sexual desires or to improve the ego, to get a better feeling about oneself by being having more partners or having prettier partners or making the partner more dependent on us or having a stronger influence on that partner. And then Tantra is no longer a method of self-development. It becomes a tool of power. It becomes a tool of the ego to influence other people, to get what we want, to build up a reputation. And ultimately the Tantra is no longer serving its purpose of creating development of the person in a vertical level and then the development becomes very horizontal. We start having more and more of experiences on the same level rather than experiences which are on higher and higher levels. One of the problems with Tantra, which many people will also uh, come to experience, is that Tantra unfortunately is not a one-person show. So you can develop yourself in the Tantra, so you can become better and better and better at finding these higher vibrations and going into higher and higher levels of contact. But if you're with a person who is yeah, unexperienced in that, then ultimately that lack of experience can become a limiting factor. And you will find that that other person um, yeah, will need to evolve to a similar level for you to evolve again. Um, so it is not just about self-development. Tantra is also very much about being with a person who is ready or open enough or capable to feed you. It is not about just being skilled enough to take what you want from everybody. Um, because making a contact, making a connection is really uh, something you should be doing together. You can do it alone, but this is very much the dark side where you're in a way intruding in somebody and grabbing, yanking out more or less what you need. Um, this is more akin to rape than to love. Um, so this is also a method of the Tantra which I yeah, don't really support. And the Tantra does have a strong magical power because it stimulates the life force, it stimulates the senses, it stimulates all the chakras. So it is really opening up a lot of possibilities. But unless you have a clear focus on what you want to do with those possibilities, uh, then those possibilities can become traps. You can develop all kinds of powers and then playing with those powers can be so interesting. You stop moving onward, you stop your journey towards enlightenment or towards divinity. And these are also some of the pitfalls of the path of the Tantra. That we start using it, but in a way overusing it and thereby focusing on a more horizontal level again, rather than a more spiritual development. So Tantra is not a very easy thing to do. Um, traditionally it is said that in the Buddhist tradition you should at least yeah, be rid of all your attachments before you start practicing Tantra. In the Shivite tradition it is advised to be practicing at least eight years of, uh, of yoga so that your body is purified, it is clean, so that you are able to really use and appreciate all the energies which are coming to you. And that when you are opening up and sharing yourself, you're not sharing all your junk, all your traumas, all your past um, with the other person, but you actually are giving something divine to the other person as well. So you need to prepare yourself for tantric work, also in the Shivite tradition. 
in the Kali tradition, it is very much about balance. So if you are not able to balance yourself, if you're not able to maintain your awareness during tantric exercises and be active and be stable, be strong, um, then you're losing yourself in the experience. And it can be very nice to lose yourself in these experiences. It happens to me a lot. But this is not Tantra. As a Tantric person, you are experiencing it, not losing yourself, but you're guiding yourself. Your awareness should be stronger than the experiences. And this is in a way the competition that the experiences become stronger and stronger, deeper and deeper, and your awareness grows along with it. And until you are able to harness the power of your experiences, you should not go on the Kali Tantric path. So, I hope this will help you with Tantric exercises and what to do and what not to do, and who you can go to to ask for assistance.